necessarily be in the uh, regular meeting. So we're going to go on and uh, we're going to talk to Kitty and the friends of the Fiscalini Ranch. Kitty, take away. All righty. Well, I kind of naively thought there'd be end to removing invasive plants, at least seasonally, but that has not happened. So the volunteers have been removing kakuyu grass from around the boardwalk and um, lupins cutting, well, they're not invasive, but cutting back lupins on the bluff trail so that you can actually pass. They removed a bunch of ice plant on the bluff trail, which has now been hauled off um, the ranch. Worked on now working, uh, a lot of the work is shifting to trails. So on one of the steeper trails called the Ravine Trail, the volunteers tried to prepare it for uh, rain, should that happen. Um, so they were working on erosion control features on there. And there are a lot of secondary trails that people cut on the ranch. So the work this week is focusing on closing those off so that there's not just, it's not just all trails. So we can maintain the official trails, but the big, and, and um, the final bench is going uh, up. Um, it's mostly constructed right now out on the hill above the Marine Terrace, one of the hills above, slopes above the Marine Terrace. It's, it should be done probably within a week or two. Um, so that'll be the final bench on the West Ranch. But the big news is on the, on the Saturday after Thanksgiving, we had a planting with about 70 people there, planted about 350 Monterey pine seedlings, all grown from seed from the site. My thanks to CCSD for their support in this and all of our other projects. But it was really fun. Um, it was also... Uh, reassuring how you can keep a, a great distance from other people on the ranch and still get things done. One of the nice things about planting the trees is that they're 10 to 30 feet apart from each other. So that creates a natural social distancing. Everyone wore masks. Um, it seemed like um, a very good event. And I think people were grateful to be able to, to get out and do something positive together in public. That's my report. Any questions? Thank you. Any questions? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. Thank you. Appreciate it, Kitty. I'm sure questions will come up in the course of our day. Uh, that takes us to facilities and resources. Carlos, is that you? Yo, Carlos. That is me, but I think you have public comment before. Oh, yeah. Uh, nice call. Sorry, brother. We're going to go to public comment first. You're right. Thank you. Anybody in the uh, docket there, Osana? I'm checking right now. And so far, I haven't had anything. <clears throat> OK, perfect. Yeah. because nope. I Anybody? No? You're good. Okay, we're going to move on. Facilities and resources. Carlos, now you. Give me just one second while I turn something off here. There we go. Nice to see everybody. Hope everybody had a nice Thanksgiving. It's been a little while since I've given a full report, I think a couple of months. So uh, bear with me. I'll show you some pictures and just let you know uh, what we've been up to. Um, and I think I have two, two reports that I'd like to provide for you. Um, so the first uh, report is just some activities that I have going on uh, at the department. And let me see if I can share that with you. There. Can you see those pictures? Yes. yes. All right, good. So uh, in the last uh, couple of months, we've been doing quite a bit of work at the uh, Veterans Hall. Uh, as you can see on these pictures, uh, we've uh, taken out a couple of very large dead Monterey pine trees 
Uh, we also submitted some permits to be able to remove uh, several cypress trees from the area. And we've also pruned uh, some of the trees and uh, at the vet hall as well. Uh, once the trees were removed, we rented a stump grinder and grinded down all of the stumps. Uh, the work was done by Davy Tree Service. They did that for free on a large pine tree. And then the rest of the work was done by West Coast Tree Service and also CCSD staff. Oh, wow. uh, we've continued to do quite a bit of maintenance at the vet's hall. As you can see in the picture, uh, we've ended up restriping the entire parking lot, uh, all the white stripes, all the handicap stripes, all the red no parking lines and all of the uh, bumper stops were all painted by CCSD staff. We also wanted to make some improvements inside the vet's hall since uh, we haven't had really uh, much activity inside uh, since COVID started back in March. Uh, so you see uh, CCSD staff working on the stage on the pictures. Uh, we ended up cleaning all the walls, uh, patching all the walls, retexturing all the walls inside there and then repainting everything. Looks good. Well, yeah. As Kitty mentioned, uh, there's been a lot of activity out on the ranch uh, with removing ice plant. And you can see on the pictures, uh, you know, a lot of ice plant has been removed by volunteers. You also see in the middle picture the uh, truck with a tractor uh, that's a contractor uh, loading up all the ice plant and being uh, hauled off. Uh, all of that work, uh, not my work, that's all volunteer work. That's all uh, Kitty uh, volunteers pulling it and also the friends paying for the contractor to uh, remove the ice plant. Uh, we also have a brand new bench out on the ranch. Uh, again, not my project. This is all Walt Andrews, one of the you know, better known volunteers that we have on the ranch. Uh, kudos to him. He designed the uh, bench that you see on the left-hand side top. It's almost finished. Uh, there's just a little uh, slab, wooden slab that needs to be placed on there. Uh, but it's a fantastic bench, great view. Come out and uh, see if you can find the bench and, and enjoy it. Uh, over the past month, CCSD staff has been extremely busy out on the ranch and other properties doing tree work. Uh, we have removed, cut, chipped, hauled away 40 dead trees on Fiscalina Ranch and other CCSD properties. And you see on the pictures there, uh, CCSD staff cutting down the trees, chipping the trees, and then hauling away uh, the large rounds. Are those 40 trees? 40 trees, yes. 40. 40. Okay, thank you. We also had a request from the fire department uh, as they have new um, members in the department that just started uh, and don't have a lot of chainsaw experience. They requested uh, some of our assistance uh, for them to come out on the ranch and get some chainsaw practice. Of course, we have you know plenty of dead trees for them to come out and, and practice on. So you see on the pictures uh, about you know half a day's worth of uh, work uh, with them utilizing chainsaws and dropping smaller trees and just getting some good practice there. Uh, as Kitty mentioned, we also had our annual tree planting, and uh, you can see in the middle picture Kitty, uh, you know, uh, holding the directions on how to plant trees, and, and Carmen, one of the FFRP board members there, uh, instructing uh, the uh, folks coming out on how to plant trees. Uh, it was overall a great, uh, great event. Everybody, I think, had a good time. Uh, Kitty mentioned over 350 pine trees got planted there. Uh, we've also been working on other properties. Uh, specifically, this uh, picture shows us working on the pocket park on Center Street. Uh, we ended up spending about a half a day there, uh, cleaning up the area, trimming back uh, the brush and the willows, and uh, just, just making it look a little more presentable there. And this last picture that you see here is the trash can recycle planter boxes that you see on Main Street. 
Uh, be we're working with uh, Beautified Cambria at the moment. Uh, they received a grant to uh, spruce up uh, those planters. Uh, so we've brought two of them down to the shop. Uh, they hired a contractor to sand, restain them, and then we'll move them back onto uh, Main Street. And then Beautify Cambria and volunteers are going to uh, replant and uh, re-spruce the, uh, the planters at the top. Uh, so that'll be an ongoing project, uh, you know, for at least several months. That's one of my reports. I'm happy to answer any questions on that if you if you have any. Just just a comment. The the pictures were great. Thank you for yeah. for showing that. That really makes a, a better illustration of what you've done. Look, looks good. Thank you, Kermit. Appreciate it. Anybody else? Oh, just a, just a little bit. <laughs> All right. Any other right. questions for Carlos? Do you want to give the other report? Yeah, yeah. I'll give. I'll give, you, I'll give the other report. I'll try to be brief. Uh, you know, every every year, every six months, I make my usual uh, homeless situation report, uh, and uh, I'll I'll try to be brief on it. Uh, I'm not going to talk about mental health or drug addiction or a solution to homelessness. Just uh, just to give you an overview only of. Uh, the impacts and also, you know, the amount of, of issues that we're dealing out in the field with with homeless. Um, and, you know, I, I sort of wanted just to give you maybe a um, maybe a little timeline of sorts of, uh, you know, how it's progressed throughout the years. Uh, let's see if I can find this one here. Let's see. There we go. So just to give you a little time frame, uh, you know, the homeless situation has really uh, sort of ticked up in the last four or five years. And um, about 2015, 2016, uh, we were finding maybe just a handful of encampments on, on the ranch. Uh, not very many, as you can see here. Uh, encampments on Fiscalina Ranch and CCSD owned properties. Uh, in 2016, 2017, you know, that number steadily increased. You can see here, uh, we're working with uh, the Land Conservancy uh, on cleaning up uh, CCSD owned lots below Ramsey. Uh, we're utilizing prison crews uh, that were available to us to be able to help us clean all those those properties. Uh, but then in 2018, uh, we were noticing that we were having a lot more activity on CCSD owned properties and on Fiscalini Ranch. At the end of 2018 and 2019, uh, we spent an incredible amount of time going through and really mapping out uh, where all of these encampments were. And you can see on the map, uh, you know, a picture of, um, you know, every little star isn't just one camp, it's just a location of, could be one or could be several camps. But throughout the year 2019, uh, we were able to uh, map about 60 homeless encampments on CCSD properties and um, Fiscalini Ranch. Wow. And, you know, the, these are the pictures that I've shown before about what those encampments look like. Um, some were occupied, some were abandoned. Uh, it took a year long process, multi agency process, multi phase process to be able to um, evict, clean, and rehab all of these sites. So, if you go out there, um, you know, all of those sites that you see, the 60 plus homeless encampments were cleaned up uh, at the end of last year. So we move on to this year, we saw an in, an, a little uptick of homelessness encampments. Uh, this is a map of February of this year of uh, CCSD lots and Fiscalini Ranch. Again, these are the pictures of what those encampments look like. Uh, some small, some large. 
And again, it, uh, it was a, an effort to uh, evict, to clean, and to rehab, you know, all those areas. This is a picture of September 2020. Uh, and, you know, we ended up uh, with just most of the encampments on one section of the ranch and CCSD owned properties. That's what uh, the encampments looked like a few months ago. Again, we were able to uh, evict and clean, clean all these sites. And this is what we have now, which is the encampment that you see across from Cambria Drive and Highway 1. It's the only encampment that we have, uh, we have been able to find on CCSD properties as of an inspection uh, last week. Uh, these are the pictures of the encampment there across Cambria Drive and Highway 1. Uh, just from a visual walkthrough of the site, uh, we have somewhere in the seven to 10 large homeless encampments and we're still trying to figure out how many people are there. Um, we're estimating someone the six to 10 people uh, and we're working on trying to find a solution to evict the, the people there and to clean up the site. So we're working with the county and uh, law enforcement right now to come up with a plan on doing that. Uh, I just also want to uh, say that uh, homeless encampments are just, aren't just uh, an issue on Fiscalina Ranch and open space properties. We're actually finding uh, and seeing homeless encampments on other properties that CCSD uh, owns. You can see in the picture here, uh, we're finding encampments on parks, uh, parking lots, bridges. Uh, the pictures on the top are from the pocket park. And just this year, 2020, we've uh, cleaned up that uh, camp twice. Wow. Um, the only reason I'm, like I said, the only reason I'm sharing with you these pictures is I know that, uh, you know, as far as pros is concerned, uh, you know, we're not going to find a solution to homelessness. Uh, the reason I'm sharing the pictures with you is so you're aware of what's going on out there. So you're aware of uh, what the resources that are being utilized to deal with this issue uh, are. And, you know, you're looking at very limited resources of one very small department with myself and two staff members and a limited budget to be able to deal with. Uh, at this point, I think by the end of the year, once we clean up the encampments on Cambria Drive, we're probably gonna be hitting close to 100 encampments in two years that we have cleaned up. Um, so the resources that are being spent to inspect to work with the homeless, to clean up the sites uh, is an incredible effort uh, that is sucking a lot of resources out from other, other activities that, uh, that obviously are important as well. Um, you know, as far as pros, I think, I think my, um, my sharing of these pictures and the report is more for you to maybe think about as we're doing goals, as we're doing projects, as we're making suggestions to the board, that, you know, those suggestions and those projects also uh, have a thought behind, you know, the limited resources that we have and, you know, maybe solutions or long-term maintenance plans for those, those, those projects that, uh, that we're thinking about. Uh, just one last thought, and that is the, the treatment of homeless uh, folks out there. Uh, so our legal counsel provided to us, uh, you know, a couple of years back, a procedure to evict, uh, you know, homeless from, from our property. Uh, that process includes, um, you know, posting notices, you know, bringing out the sheriff, um, you know, taking people's belongings and storing them and allowing them to come by and pick up those, those belongings. Uh, out of the close to 80 encampments now that we've cleaned up, I think I've only used that process three times. Uh, my approach has always been to 
be respectful and be human about the process. Um, I've always thought that, you know, if you have a conversation with people, if you treat them with respect, if you acknowledge them, if you take the time to listen to them, uh, they're going to respond more favorably than if we yeah. come out there with, um, you know, a heavy hand. Uh, so that has been my approach to the whole process. I've, I've never let myself think that people are uh, a burden or uh, a nuisance. I think once we start thinking about people as, as that, I think we've lost the, the, the fight on, on, on that. So, um, you know, that's been my approach to, to try to treat people as kindly as possible, even though I have a responsibility to oversee, you know, the resources that, uh, that the community has. So that's my report. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Carlos, have you had any uh, problems with that personal property? You've described it a little bit, but have you ever, in a big stack of stuff, when you haul it away, do, does anyone uh, charge you with destroying their personal property? I know this is a big deal in the cities where they have to be respectful and they contain them down to a certain amount of stuff they can carry away. But have you ever had anybody uh, complain about your, your taking their stuff? Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, we've only uh, we've only utilized the uh, the heavy-handed procedure, you know, just uh, a couple of times. Uh, most of the time, it's talking to the individual uh, and providing them with the resource of a trash bin uh, and giving them plenty of time to for themselves to you know get rid of the stuff that they don't want. Uh, then we make multiple visits, and at the last visit, we make sure that what they're leaving behind is something they don't want, that that is stuff that is basically going in the dumpster. Uh, so to answer your question, I've never had anybody um, come to me and complain that uh, we've taken their personal belongings. We, 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 we wouldn't do that. Um, we, we try to work with the individual to make sure that what they're leaving behind is actual trash. Yeah. And another question, if I could, uh, the toilet and the dumpster thing seemed like a pretty good idea. And did it, and it did attract some, I'm sure, because it was useful and necessary to them for, you know, personal, a lot of reasons. But uh, it seemed to concentrate them in that area, which is not all that bad. Uh, it could be used as kind of a, a magnet because you're always going to have some homeless people and you're going to have they're going to end up somewhere in the system so did you think that worked as pretty good as kind of a minimization process like having a target that people went down to the toilet place with the the toilet and the dumpster as kind of a better place to be so they didn't get scattered out to a wider range do you think it concentrated the people I mean, I, I think it's somewhat of a good thing in some ways, a bad thing in others. What do you feel about that? Uh, so obviously it's a double-edged sword. Uh, back in uh, March, April, May, I forget what, what time frame that was, once hit, a COVID hit, uh, and we ended up closing down the public restrooms and most everything was shut down. You know, there was, there was uh, some concern about hygiene and how we're going to be able to help the homeless uh, and, you know, there, there was discussions of, you know, there's, there's quite a bit of homelessness, or at least there's uh, a good amount of homeless in that area. And the thought was, well, let's try to see if we can help them during COVID uh, to at least keep some hygiene. So we were able to work with Mission Country uh, and Harvey Sunny has to provide them with a trash, trash dumpster, uh, porta potty and hand washing station. Um, I, it, it has been very beneficial for the homeless there. Uh, they've been able to utilize the dumpster. They've been able to utilize, you know, the, the porta potty and the hand washing station. And, uh, you know, speaking to them, they're, they're grateful for the dumpster particularly. Uh, so that is always a good thing. Uh, the double-edged sword is that now that uh, there are services there, as you mentioned, it has attracted more people. Uh, the encampments there have 
tripled in size uh, since March. Uh, and, you know, it might be that as homeless folks come about there, they might get the assumption that we're allowing them to be there. And so more will come uh, because there's services there. Um, again, I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying it's a double-edged sword. Yeah. A question. <clears throat> question, uh, Carlos, does the county or the state of California provide any resources for what you're doing? Well, the resources are as thin as can be everywhere. Uh, we're not the only ones dealing with uh, homeless and cleanups. Uh, the city of Paso has invested an incredible amount of money and time uh, cleaning riverbeds. Uh, San Luis just did a huge cleanup. Uh, Lompoc is doing a lot of cleanup as well. And you see every community uh, uh, having to deal with this issue. Um, the county, you know, I, I'm, I'm attending the county-wide homeless meetings and I'm hearing, um, you know, that every community right now, Los Osos is being hit hard by you know, homeless issues up there. So there's a lot of resources being uh, diverted that way to help them out with that. Uh, the reality is, you know, this issue is not gonna go away. And I think, uh, I think it's only gonna get worse personally, uh, just hearing what's going on around the county and around the state, uh, you know, especially with the pandemic. Uh, I think we're, we're gonna see more homeless uh, folks uh, start to pop up. Uh, so, so to answer your, your question, we're reaching out to, yeah. to the county uh, for help. Uh, I'm reaching out to the sheriff's department as well for assistance. Uh, and we're trying to find as much help as we can. Thanks, Carlos. That was a good report. Appreciate it. Carlos, uh, Carlos uh, first of all, thank you very much for doing what you're doing. And I think you've got the right attitude for it. Um, perhaps the Land Conservancy could be approached for a grant or something. If you hear of any grants that could be done to help us, uh, I think the Pros Commission could be proactive in trying to make sure those grants get uh, in there. Uh, we're accepting a lot of properties from the, um, from the Land Conservancy and uh, they do have some resources and if they can help us, help them, that would be great. Uh, also the board and uh, the Pros Commission and the general manager should continue to uh, inform the public that uh, rate, water and sewer rates do, does not support uh, parks and recreation. The only thing is the, is the and we don't have a taxing authority really. We do get some resources from uh, property uh, taxes, but not enough and we can't get enough. So uh, if people know that the only way to support this is through either taxing ourselves more with some kind of a measure or trying to get grants. And, uh, and the fact that since we got the ranch, even though we in inherited, uh, you know, uh, hundreds of acres, uh, the CCSD did, did contribute hundreds of hundreds of thousands of dollars to purchase it. And yet now we have to maintain it and we don't have the resources to do so. If it wasn't for the friends, we'd be in much worse uh, shape. But somehow, Steve, maybe when you give a report, you make sure that you know the good work that Carlos is doing is really unfunded, and we need to come up with a way to um, help him. That's Are you referring specifically to his homeless encampment efforts, or well, that's one. Oh, well, that's one, but also the fact that we have a ranch that we never had funding to support. And uh, Carlos is not only doing homeless, but he's doing ranch maintenance and, and property maintenance that was never budgeted for. Yeah, so yeah. it's just, it's a problem that the, the, the people that pay the rates thinks that the rates support this, but they don't. The, the water and sewer rates have to be used only for water and sewer. You can't take some of it and give it to Carlos. We need to find a way to get Carlos's or parks and recreation to be funded at, at a higher level. Gotcha. Whatever men. Now I hear you. I didn't know what you were getting at, but now I do. Okay. I'll make that point when I make my presentation on Thursday. Thank you. You gotcha. Stan, Stan I have I'll, a question. Go I'll, ahead, I'll just, Stan. I'll just, 
I'll just echo one one thing from Jim because he he did mention it, and, and that that's the assistance from the friends. And like you said, I I have no idea where we'd be without the friends. Uh, with all the fundraising and all the volunteers and all the man hours and and all the the help that they provide, um, yeah, we'd be we'd be in, in in bad bad shape if it wasn't for the friends. I have Thank you. one more question, right. Charles. Uh, the issue of the toilet, uh, the, the what happens with the homeless, you know, is going to apply to our toilet that we put down there as far as management. And then I'm talking about it, do we put if we put in sinks, they're going to be used. And if we put in um, outside water faucets or uh, any kind of, of facility outside and w operational hours. So knowing kind of what all this stuff is a magnet for, what do you suggest we leave out in that toilet that we normally would put in the city? Would you leave a sink in or would you just lock everything indoors at a certain time? Would you leave something outside like a sink and a water faucet uh, if you close it at eight o'clock or dusk? What do you suggest that we, how we tailor our facilities of our future toilet in relation to this homeless issue? Closure or leave out some things and leave it open? What do you suggest? Well, I think my first thought is I don't think we can design uh, uh, a public facility uh, to not service people, uh, and you know we can't exclude the homeless from utilizing um, a building. Uh, I, my first suggestion is as as much as as we've done in the other restrooms, which has been effective for vandalism and just just general issues, is uh, to you know to close them down. Um, you know, at about eight o'clock. Uh, once you leave a building open after dark, uh, you know, that's when people go in and start um, vandalizing and doing stuff that they shouldn't. So, so far that has been very effective on the other public restrooms that we have uh, is, you know, closing them down at a certain point. Hey, I don't want to kill this conversation, but if we're going to talk about the restrooms, we've got the update on the agenda. So I think we can go over some of that there. Okay. Anybody can else? I, can I ask got? one question? Yeah, I just have one question. Um, is it at all possible, and I guess maybe John Weigel could uh, um, weigh in on this, w would, what would be the process for trying a GoFundMe um, to help um, augment some of the um, um, budget for, for Carlos for what he's doing? That's a great question. Uh, don't know the answer to that. Um, um, yeah, I'd have to. I'd have to investigate that. Would you please? Because I'll tell you, my um, my son um, organized a GoFundMe in San Francisco for a business that was in um, in. Uh, um, it's gonna go. It's gonna go bust, and it's it was like a cultural. Uh, site in the tenderloin that uh, he didn't want to have uh, shuttered. And so he started a GoFundMe and raised, God, I think $195,000 um, to help keep that business open. And um, so I know it's possible. You know, one of the things you got to do is you have to find people that are excited about helping out with land conservation and, you know, um, the ranch maintenance and, and dealing with the expenditures that we have that aren't budgeted. And maybe, maybe we could do that. Um, but we need to know what the legality would be, I think, before yeah, we start. Go ahead, go ahead Jim. Jim. Uh, if it's okay, I think the problem is us in a way. I remember John, and uh, Steve saying, gee, we should have a, a nonprofit. We should have a 501c3 and have that help fund parks and recreation. And we just kind of let it die. And I think that that might be the vehicle to make it happen uh, outside of the friends. So well, I, I would say we are an existing 501c3. You do raise money for the projects. And if, you, if we raised enough money, 
and I'm saying this without talking to my board, to offset more of the forest projects, then that would leave more money for the rest of PRO's budget. And that's my goal is to, to work towards being a larger contributor to the maintenance. I, I agree from a maintenance perspective, but as far as the, the homeless and, uh, and land conservancy, other, other land conservancy type people and just the general public wanting to put something into parks and recreation, yeah. they might make a contribution to uh, parks and recreation 501c3 because they know it's not gonna go to John's salary or something. <laughs> so that's, it, it's people yeah. reform such a thing. Steve, have you looked into it? Um, no, we've been on COVID lockdown. Okay. Jesus. Yeah, the whole thing got gutted. We were sitting right on top of that, remember? We were yeah. going to do the vets hall and all of it. So, yeah. Okay. No, I, I, I haven't, you know. Okay. We, uh, we, so what's, what's the next step? Maybe we can get somebody to to help somebody us larger and smarter than I there was a whole group in that room and I was definitely on the bottom of the list of ability to accomplish that goal the lions right. was there the rotary was there the legion was there there was churches there you know Mel, Mel McCulloch was he there maybe Mel was there okay. so one other thing uh you know we have we're Cambria we have a tremendous number of tourists and I know they're enjoying themselves and we're enjoying themselves. And somehow <clears throat> it seems like we ought to be able to tap into some of that in order to give us some finances to run parks and recreation. I don't know how you'd do it. Probably would require bringing our representative or uh, I guess for the county and maybe even the state representative or whatever to start discussing this stuff because this is happening for most of the communities like ours. Yeah. I think it's a great idea for to look at for 2021 as some kind of an objective to um, to try to to I don't think we can solve our budgetary problems, but at least we can help Carlos out. Right. Yeah, we're getting close to needing a parks department. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, all right, so let's let's move on and uh, get into the consent agenda. Can I get a move to approve the minutes from November? I so move. Permit moves. Second. Do I get a second from Adolf? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Hey, aye. 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 All right, Steve, minutes passed. Steve, uh, uh, hey Steve, I just have a, a quick uh, correction on the uh, on the minutes. Uh oh, and go maybe, ahead. And maybe uh, general. Uh, Manager Weigold can correct me on it. So uh, number B on the minutes, uh, it says that, uh, let's see here, uh, CCSD received a grant of $120,000 for a generator for the vet stall. I think it's just, we, we have applied. I don't think we have received the, the grant. Okay, thank you. That, that'd be correct. All right. That's it. Carlos reads the minutes. That's a good one. Uh, okay, uh, so now we've got meeting dates. Has anybody looked at the meeting dates and do we have a problem with any of the meeting dates for 2021? I think they're fine. Yeah, even I'm not looking at them right now. The only questions are normally that Tuesday in November, if that means anything on an election. But if it does, we can change it as we get closer. So can I get a motion to accept the meeting dates for the upcoming year? I move that we accept the meeting dates. Joyce says yes. Kermit says yes on the second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, those are the meeting dates. Now we're talking about the uh, commissioners and the alternate vacancies in the application process which we deal with all the time and it still confuses me, but I'm very happy that we have alternative members. So I don't want to change that. Jim, do you have a question on that? No, uh, I, I, I think I've only been on for two years. I think I'm, I'm, my position was replacing somebody that left or something, I don't know. So when I was looking at the bylaws, it, it says a four year term, but yet apparently I'm up in December. Does anybody have a detail on that? Well, I think the, the one that's that's in question now to me is Terry Lord. 
uh, if there, everyone else is serving out their term, I believe. Actually, according to the minutes, there are two people that are up. And I don't have the minutes in front of me, but I um, think I am too. Yeah. So the two people that are up um, is Stanley Cooper, his term as alternate expired in October, and then Jim's alternate term expires next month. Um, I would be willing, Steve, if, if or if it's a pleasure of the board to um, fill in for Terry as a regular until she comes back you know, until we're over this COVID thing, because she hasn't showed up at, you know, for um, quite a while. And I'd, I'd continue being an alternate, alternate or whatever, you know, whatever you need. I don't seem to be going anywhere. So Haley, how are you reading our responsibilities right now? You mean for the alternate members? Yeah, so we have to replace the alternate members and do we do that on our own or do we send that to the big board? So you guys should be sending a recommendation to the board um, to extend their, um, their appointments. Okay. So your bylaws aren't, you know, doesn't really cover um, the alternate appointments. It talks yeah. a lot about the five members with full voting privileges, but it doesn't really cover alternates. But in the past, what you guys did was you would move to approve a recommendation to the board to extend the alternate positions, and then it will go to the board for approval by resolution. I move okay. that we extend the alternates and present that to the board. Do I have a second. second for that? Though I guess I was up in, in October, so, but I'll still second it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say Adolf. Adolf, give me a second. There you go. Adolf, yeah, yeah, second. second. All in favor of extending right. the uh, terms of the alternate members, say aye. 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 All right. Uh, anything else we need to do with that, Haley? That is it. And we will try to get it on the January agenda for the okay. board to review and approve. Okay. Perfect. Cool. Thank you. Let me get rid of that. Um, that takes us into an update on the skate park. All right, Carlos, you want to give us a little something or Mr. Weigel, do you have something? Oops, it, Carlos, Mr. Weigel. So, um, we, we are uh, moving ahead with the skate park. Uh, our next step is to get a contract with a designer. Uh, so we're making work, working on that with uh, our um, legal counsel. And then uh, we'll have, uh, uh, we already have a proposal from a designer, uh, designer and builder, but he, this is just for the design part and they'll do uh, some renderings and uh, some other engineering work and uh, come up with costs for the whole project. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Carlos, got, do you have anything? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll add a little bit more. So um, I met with uh, Julie and Shara uh, yesterday. I uh, had a, a good conversation with them. Um, they have a lot of passion. They've done a lot of great work. Um, kudos to them uh, and all the kids for all the fundraising that they've been doing. Um, and uh, we met as well with uh, Spore Ranch a couple of weeks back. Aaron, I believe uh, is his name. I forget what his last name is. He's, he's the representative for Spore Ranch. They built uh, quite a bit of um, Skate parks in the past, and uh, you know, if Cher or Julie want to chime in on on that, uh, they provided us with um, an estimate on doing a conceptual plan of the skate park. Uh, it's not the it's not the actual um, design build portion. It's just the conceptual plan. The conceptual plan is basically the starting point for the project where. Uh, they will bring in community input, the kids, 
um, members, pros. Uh, they'll take their ideas, they'll put them together in paper, they'll go to the county uh, with those ideas. They'll ask the county what we need from uh, or what they're going to require from us um, if we want to build the, the park. Uh, and then when it's all said and done, we should have a good idea, good uh, presentation of what the skate park is going to look like um, with all of the permitting requirements that we're going to need with an actual estimate of what the, the cost is going to be for the skate park. Uh, the, that estimate is $14,000 for them to do that work. Um, it's well within the budgeted amount that PROS has for, for the project. Uh, as you recall, the board uh, allocated $17,000 to help with the skate park rebuild. So that's well within budget. Uh, and as General Manager Weigold mentioned, we'll, we'll be working uh, with uh, legal counsel to go forward with you know, trying, to, trying to do a contract. Uh, 2000 I'm sorry, Joyce, I, I couldn't hear you. 2000? So the, the, the estimate for, for the work uh, is $14,000. Okay, but you're going into the county with 14,000 or is that what the estimate is that we're going to ask? No, this is, this is, this is, this is the estimate from uh, Spoon, Spoon Ranch. Okay. For, for the conceptual plan of for the conceptual plan, okay, of the project. And what is the name of the of the uh, organization that's doing it? Who is the organization in charge of making here. the conceptual plan? Uh, let me see here. There. Okay. I got There's it. Phone yes. ranch okay. skate parks. In. okay. Thanks. Thanks, Carlos. Got that's it. their that's their estimate, fourteen grand. Okay, thank you, thank you. Maybe John and and Carlos, maybe this is the wrong thing to say, but I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out the idea anyway. Um, the um, the schoolhouse is uh, being rented to a nonprofit, and so the CCSD owns the property, but they leased it to the nonprofit. So now the non nonprofit doesn't have to pay uh, wages. They don't have to go through, they, they aren't bound like a CC, like the CCSD is bound by, you know, bidding and all that other kind of stuff. Perhaps an idea is to lease the land to the skate park people so that they don't, so they don't have to pay competitive wages. They don't have to jump through all of the hoops of a design build. CCSD can't do a design build, but maybe that private group can do a design build and get around it. I'm just throwing it out there and maybe you can check with legal counsel to see. Yeah, Jim, Jim we, I actually already did that with legal counsel and we're, because we own the land, we're bound to uh, yeah. subscribe to the, yeah. to all those regulations. Yeah, we tried that, uh, but great idea. Um, all right. Yeah. Any other ideas? So I'm all ears. Okay, thanks. Uh, and so then my only question would be as to the grant and how the $177,000 grant is going. So really no, no more progress on that because we have to come up with the design and identify a contractor and have a signed agreement before we can apply. Okay, but that's what we're doing with Spawn Ranch, right? Well, that's just for an initial design. We'd have to go then forward with a final design, bid it out, find a contractor, contract with the contractor, then we apply for the grant. So that's still on the on the radar? Correct. Yeah, all right. Because I'm pushing for that, right? I'm like, I don't want to miss that $177,000. And the way I'm feeling right now, the skate park is the project we're going to use for that because that bathroom is a long ways away because we don't even know if we can have water on it. And if we can only do a pit toilet, we don't need the $177,000.
So I'm going to be pushing hard for the skate park to get that money unless somebody else has got another idea. And I've been told through a good source that the skate park is starting to develop quite a little pot of money. So once they get their money together, they're going to be a player. So that being said, I want to just make sure that we're all pushing forward for this particular item. Uh, one of the things that has been told to me that's important both, I think, to Carlos and the skate park people is like we've done with the bathroom people with Jim and Kermit. They would kind of like a little ad hoc group, two of you, that we could put forth to say, hey, this is what's going on with the skate park. Does anybody disagree with that? Right, because I've kind of been dealing with the skate park people and I would really like it to be two of you guys so that you guys know what's going on, you know, so it's not just me. Stan, would you be into it? Well, um, okay. You'll like the people that you're dealing with. I've, I've talked to the, um, the mom who's kind of the, the lightning rod yeah the group so they won't bug you good their efficiency will make you happy good <laughs> yeah joyce good. do you want to get in that sure why not all right so i'm I, i'm going to because i believe it's within my power to appoint joyce and stan as a little pseudo ad hoc committee to work with the skate park people to keep us informed as to that progress carlos are you comfortable with that very comfortable. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're going to go with that. But Kermit, there's been a request for you to pay particularly close attention to the skate park because there, the group is comfortable with your knowledge. So will yes. you do that for us? Sure. Okay. I'm not sure what status that is, but sure. Well, just... Those around. Yeah, I will yeah, do that. You know, your, your expertise is valued. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's take some questions from the audience. The That's first us. member of the public that wishes to speak is Julie. Julie, please unmute yourself. Good morning. It's so good to see everyone. Thank you so much for uh, giving, letting us have a little bit more time on the agenda in regards to the skate park. As Carlos had mentioned, we had a fantastic meeting yesterday. We appreciate your time, Carlos. Shara and I were able to kind of get him up to speed as he has been out and we've got him in front of us now. Um, I know John had mentioned um, where things were at in regards to this particular proposal that's been put in front of him. So we're just very anxious to obviously get that piece started. Um, I just want to clarify to all of the pros commission that the land we are talking about uh, with the design work is the Main Street location. So we have flushed that out. It is definitely Main Street. Um, the proposal is specific to that location. And again, the 14,000 is within the allocated funds that were awarded to us to be able to use. I would like to share with the group at this time, we have $100,000 in flush cash. And mm -hmm. I think, thank you, Kermit. <laughs> um, <laughs> This is a serious group and it's a passion project and we are doing everything we can. We've expressed that to Carlos. Um, we'll be handling those donations that have come in in the next week or two, uh, they'll be made public announcements, but we wanna make sure that we are being um, very gracious to those funds that have come in and how those individuals would like to be recognized. Um, but yes, I think that is a very fair amount as a talking point to be able to say, um, it's real. Um, it's extremely real. And um, I hope you all can look at that number and, and go, yeah, um, these guys are, are doing what they're supposed to be doing. We're going to continue to fundraise, um, but we obviously would love that proposal done in the next week or two. Um, we realistically would like to see dirt move by April and this park built by the fall. Um, I've had multiple conversations with Aaron and his designer, Adam, um, parks can be built in four months. And our next hurdle beyond this proposal is design, bid, build versus design, build. 
Um, Mr. Weigel, I know you're extremely adamant about a design bid build. I, I'm still challenging that. I think that we'd be more than happy to pay for legal counsel's time. And Carlos actually expressed to me, um, Mr. Carmel is on retainer, so our payment wouldn't be necessary. But I do think it's worth a conversation with our initiative, as well as Aaron Spahn himself, who has done these projects in other areas, including Oildale, which is a very similar type of district to your water district as design builds. Um, it's tremendous cost and it's gonna slow this project down. And I, I'm sorry, but I'm not taking the first answer of this is our only way we can do it when there are other ways to do it and that's money for the park. So I'm gonna ask very kindly and graciously again that we refer to this project to experts who have done it in other places in this state successfully, legally, with finding a way to manage this um, code that's been placed in front of us by legal counsel. So the reason I'm on the call this morning is specifically to, you know, to talk about design build and um, how we can go back to counsel on that. And I'm going to post commission specifically right now to say, you know, I would like the opportunity for this discussion to take place because I, I feel like not only again, is it gonna save a tremendous amount of cash that could be going straight to the park, but it's going to slow this process down a lot, months and months. And please correct me on that in any way, Mr. Weigel or Carlos, um, but that's the way the design build, bid build process works. And I'm, I'm, I'd love to answer any other questions, but again, Aaron's more than welcome to sit down with council and, and show you how it can be done. Okay, so I'm gonna, cause this is kind of, I feel like this is a crux of a little bit of what's going on and I don't understand it or the intricacies of it. Design, bid, build, or design, build, right? Somebody's got to come to grips with that and really sink their teeth into it because I do believe there's other options out there besides that concept. And uh, there you go. Kermit, what's your thought? Well, just my thought is if it's a gift to the city or gift to the community, uh, does it, it wouldn't go through a design. I mean, if you receive a gift like um, uh, Tesla Motors put in the parking lot at the, uh, at the little village parking lot, we wouldn't care if they did a, a, a bid because they didn't, uh, they're not, it's not, they may, and they will gift us the parking lot, obviously the, the asphalt surface and stuff like that, or they maintain it. But the question is if it was maintained by the skateboard, skateboard corporation or nonprofit, and it's a gift to the city, why would they need to go through a bid process, uh, the purchase of the city? It's, it may not necessarily, or, or say city, CCSD, may not necessarily have to belong to the CCSD and you could bypass that uh, requirement. Would that be true, John? Yeah, my understanding is, um, you know, uh, I don't know if it would be if it's fully funded if that makes a difference but right now all I know is that if if it's uh, built on CCSD property we have to follow the state requirements you know from building and construction and that would be true even of, of uh, you look at the things you do get like the uh, fiscal eating ranch and statues and so forth they don't necessarily go through a bid process on those, do they? It, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think those are construction projects that, you know, that, uh, you know, putting a bench or something like that in there. John, can I throw another wrench in here? Uh, maybe we could sell the property. Yeah. Yes. Sell it to them. Yes. It's a thought. Revenue for the CCSD. Uh, just throwing it out there. Mm. Or don't mm -hmm. they do those things where you just transfer title for a while and then I transfer title back? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that, that's that's. I read that. Thing. I read you rich people do that crazy stuff all the time. They make laws <laughs> for rich people doing crazy stuff all the time. 
<laughs> There's another idea though too. I think the CCSD, if they sell something, they have to offer it first yeah. to a uh, another government agency. Carlos, do you have? Any, are you going to weigh in here? You're afraid to contradict your boss or say, "Oh, didn't we? We didn't build. We didn't bid the skate park, or I mean, the dog park. We just came up with thirty-five grand and built it." Yeah, hey, I'm afraid to contradict my boss. All right, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but but I understand Julie's uh, concern, obviously, as uh, you know, skate parks are unique, and you have to find the right contractor to be able to build those those skate parks, or else you know they're one dangerous uh, or malfunctioning. As far as the dog park and you know phase one of the community park, we actually bid that. Uh, we ended up actually bidding that twice. Uh, we had multiple bids come in and we awarded the contract to the lowest bidder. But obviously that's, you know, you're talking about moving but dirt. But not the 35 extra thousand dollars we spent on the dog park. That wasn't in the original contractor's bid. The money we paid to the guy that did the railing and stuff. Yeah, the phase one included uh, grading, drainage, parking lot, and the dog park. So the dog park was part of the bidding all right. uh, process. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, where are we? Julie, do you want to talk again? Julie, go ahead and unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, I, you know, I don't know how we go about doing that. I'm just saying, I, I think it's worthy of a conversation. Um, again, there are projects like the one in Oildale that is not a city or a county. So I'm just perplexed. Like I'm perplexed as to why CCSD is so special that they can't fall into some other type of consideration of design build. And I, as far as purchasing the property, you know, please know from the very beginning, Shara and I, this is a passion project. We have families, we have jobs, we have a depth of our own investments in, in businesses in this community. Uh, we had no desire to step into forming a nonprofit and, and, you know, running this for many, many, many years as a nonprofit um, because we felt that there was fiscal responsibility with CCSD. And so, um, we're trying very hard to bring this information to the table. Construction is not my space. I've said that from day one, uh, but, but I do feel like there are better ways of doing things. And taking that first answer is not always the correct answer. And, and I am gonna keep bringing this up because I, I know how special skate parks are in the sense of construction. It is not two by fours. It is very specific. And there are only a handful of people who can even do this job. And they won't even, and John, you know this, because we've discussed this, they won't even give us a bid. If it's not design build, they're not gonna even give us a bid because I've spoken to two of them. And the email we will be getting back is thank you, not interested. <laughs> so you're hearing a little you know, of my frustration only because this is a big, piece of it. And what concerns me is we're going to get through spending the 14,000, which thank you. We're excited. Let's get that going this week, next week. It shouldn't, I mean, the proposal has been sitting there since the 17th of November. I got it. We had a holiday, but it shouldn't take a month to decide on hiring somebody to do the creative work and potential survey work. So I don't know why that couldn't be done this week. And in the meantime, begin talking with at least council again, John, in regards to looking at this project in Oildale and talking to Aaron um, and seeing how they did it. I know there's a way to do this. Yeah, can I say that? I That kid that showed up at that skate park was very knowledgeable. He's a smart dude. And if he, and he, I don't know if Carlos has talked to him and I don't know if talking to the lawyer is the answer, but he seemed to have answers for these questions that we're having. And he's saying, listen, I've done it in the state of California. I did it here and there. And the conversation was beyond me. But I'm telling you, he seemed intelligent. I think it would behoove us 
to have him talk to somebody to see if he can change their mind about something I'm not even really sure what I'm talking about. But that's okay. that's how I'm trying to, you know, disseminate this information. Kermit. Why can't we bid out design build? Once they've got the concept plan, they their their part is finished. Why can't we put out design build? I doubt if anybody else will bid on it. it you'd have the whole package is all you're bidding out. And there's not very many people who are gonna bid on it. And I doubt if it, there any other buddy else is gonna bid on somebody else's design build so, or uh, excuse me, proposed concept plan. So the, so the rule in the state of California, if the overall project is under a million dollars, you cannot do a design build project. Hmm. Under a million. Why, that, that sounds strange. But. Yeah, right? That's like banks giving a cheap loan to rich people and a high loan to poor people. So if it's a little project and it doesn't make a lot of sense, we got to do all this stuff. It's, it's super huge. Just do that. All right. I have a question. So, so, I, so I guess, uh, John, I guess you would have to make a, uh, I'll call it the RFP, a request for proposal. Meaning that somebody would have to put that together to say what they're going to be doing. So who in our organization then would put that proposal together in order for somebody to bid on it? Who is that? That's Carlos and me. You and Carlos. So if you brought in that designer guy as a consultant to bring together whatever the skate park is going to be and make that the proposal, would that work? Yeah, so we for, for, so we don't have to bid out professional services contracts. So that's why we can hire this designer without bidding, bidding out to for three and getting bids on it. So we can hire the designer for the restroom and the skate park individually. We don't have to bid that out. Once it comes to construction, we then got to fall back on our purchasing policy, which is we have to go out and get three bids, and uh, they have to meet the requirements of you know, working with the federal government, prevailing wages, et cetera. Okay, so 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 the Spawn Ranch folks, they design and build, or they simply design and then go out and get somebody to build it? They can, they can build also. Well, could the friends of the Fiscal um, Ranch do it as a nonprofit? It's not on ranch property, so I don't, it's outside of our remit. Okay. If it was on the East Ranch, we could do it. Well, we could give you that piece of property. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that'll go over super well, but we, if you want we'll me to take it to the map. board. <laughs> you don't want to smite me with that. <laughs> <Don't think so. laughs> You, uh, Joyce. Um, I think we're kind of at a, a stall, you know, at a place where we're not going to make any progress. Maybe we should, yeah. uh, I don't know what, but we could just go on and on and on. <laughs> well, we've got 14 grand. We need to design that thing. We need to get on that this week and get going. And then we can grind this thing out over the next 30 days. All right, I see Ms. Tatham wants to say a word. Good morning, can you hear me? Yes. I, Kermit, you had a question. I'm not sure where Julie went, um, but you had a question about Spawn Ranch. Um, <clears throat> you said, can they not design and build? And, and typically with the skate park designers, what they want to do is design build because they're so specific they do not want to put their design out there to be bid upon by other contractors so just to answer was, your question on that i was just thinking of the con that be true also of the concept plan because once they do the uh, my thought is they we put out the concept plan and then bid on that but that was a design build concept after the concept plan so uh, 
No, they would. They wouldn't. They aren't going to do blueprints. They're just going to do a concept plan that you know still has to be has still has to have uh, construction plans if it was going to be bid on. And that's the problem. Is you, I, I don't know how we'd ever get construction plans from an outfit that doesn't want to do design anything but design build. So uh, because they they're they're not going to want to submit construction plans to the county, although. They sort of will to a certain extent, but uh, not to the degree that you would have on a normal bid process. I think it'd be very hard for us to do a normal bid process on a skate park with the various shapes and forms that we have. I don't see any way, right. actually, I don't see any way around it uh, because the plans would cost as much as the construction in some ways. So it kind of has to be a design build uh, because of the shapes and forms. It's, it's really complex for a small project. I'm agreeing with you. Steve, uh, if we really have to uh, have something done in the next, you know, this month or the next few days, weeks, um, could you and Stan maybe, you know, I'll move that you can do whatever you want uh, in the next uh, week. If Stan was on that uh, ad hoc committee meeting, uh, ad hoc committee um, but if something has to be done I move that you can make a decision <laughs> or something like that because I can't add anything I don't think anybody can add anything to this discussion as we speak yeah John where are we where are you at right now what are you going to be doing this week for this particular project I am or is that a question to counsel. Carlos yeah, so we're working, with, like I mentioned before, we're working with uh, district council to put a contract together. Okay. Okay. So oh, we're at a standstill until that is done, right, John? Pardon me, one more time? Uh, we're at a standstill until that is accomplished. Is that true? Um, well, I don't, I don't look at it as a standstill. I mean, that's the next step forward is to- Okay, uh, all right. You know, get a contract, engage with the with the designer, and and then he goes off and we pay him some money. He goes off and does his thing. Okay, and so what what, what Julie is asserting is that there that Spawn Ranch is not going to design it for fourteen thousand dollars. Is that true? That's correct. That is correct. Julie, can you comment on that? Is that do you find that true? Thank you for unmuting me. That is correct. In other words, these aren't stamp construction documents. This is just creative, you know, chiming in with the community, um, which is why I'm. Yeah, but what John so is going to put out is I'm he's going to put out an RFP that says we want construction documents. Is that correct, Mr. Weigel? No, that is not correct. No. Steve. I don't. Okay. Yeah, this is just simply surveying creative work, and so that's why I'm pushing so hard on us getting clarity on where we are headed because it is a very quick next step. And to me, I like to use money responsibly, especially when we're bringing in public funds. And that next step is gonna be on us very quick. And by the way, in regards to two things, one, I, John, I have a question in regards to source well guide because source well guide is, could be used in this process and you are on the approved list for source well. Um, um, so I'd like to look into that. Um, it, maybe Carlos or John, you can elaborate on what source, source well is for some of those on Pro's Commission who may not be aware. Um, that would be one. And then the second is in regards to, you know, us jumping right into needing to know that next step. Um, it also is a fluid conversation with somebody like Aaron, again, who is built for Red Bull, Vans, Disney. I mean, this guy's the, he's the real deal. And I'm, he does specifically California. So he understands California state law. He's also used this grant before. He understands the Prop 68 grant in which we are looking to potentially use for this project. So again, I'm, I'm asking for very careful consideration before you just jump to a vote of design, bid, build. Um, I'll end it there. So have it, the, hasn't the big CCSD board already okayed the money to design it? 
Well, they okayed the, the money to do what we're doing. In other words, 17,000, this comes under budget at 14 plus 3,000 for a grant writer. And by the way, to go back just a moment on the question in regards to potential RFPs, if that is the only direction design bid build, um, John was provided multiple RFP samples that I got from another designer that would be a very easy pirate of having to write the RFP. I mean, we're, we're doing everything we can in homework to make this as easy as possible. Again, that's not the, the way we wanna go, but I'm saying that they've been handed over sample RFPs. Can we explain source goal guide? Yeah, so explain that. Carlos, do you know source well? I think I'll leave that up to John. Yeah, I'm drawing a blank right myself. Well, gentlemen, you need to look into it because you've done projects with SourceWell and it's basically an open PO in the sense of approval of construction and projects like the skate park have been done with SourceWell and you're already on the list. That's the Does anybody in our group know what SourceWell is? No. no. All right. It's more That's about I, what I've been told is it's a little group in the state of contractors that say we don't have to do the bid process because we're good. And it's another group of agencies like ourselves that say we're going to be in this little group over here and we can hire them in that group over there if they're on the list. That seems to be what that is. Julie, is that true? Correct. It's a cooperative purchasing organization. Oh, I didn't use the right words. I apologize. <laughs> but skate parks have been done with SourceWell before. And again, CCSD is currently on the list. Good to know. Julie, I'm going to come down on Friday and, and talk to you. Um, I would... So we can carry on further. Julie, I think Stan can help you get there. Awesome. Adolf, what do you got? No, I, I was just thinking whether or not the source well had a, a, a limit in terms of amount or if it was just an open situation where these folks are all qualified and you can hire them for whatever money you need to spend. Yeah, I don't know. And also, uh, I guess if we put a proposal together, I, I guess somebody has to review all those proposals. Who will do that? Mm. Say that cool. again. Well, you put it together in RFP, and somebody responds to that RFP. So within the organization of the CCSD or pros or whoever, someone has to review all the proposals that are sent in. And, to, and supposedly you would select or not select those who have made a bid <clears throat> for the project. And I'm not sure whether or not CCSD follows those kinds of guidelines or not. And also, John, I, I don't think you, do you have to uh, actually select the lowest bidder or can you select the best project designer and builder? Yeah, we, have, we have some liberties there, you know, local builders, for example, local business owners, we have a preference built into our purchasing policy to use local first. Um, you know, I have to dig in more to understand as it comes to uh, um, final selection. But it, I, I think there's some some liberty there, some room to uh, you know choose the uh, the right contractor. That, that sounds almost like Sourcewell, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, this so Spawn Ranch, who is the designer, is, is a member of this. Okay. All right. So there's an avenue that, that we can obviously speed things up by going in those directions. Okay. We need to move on. I have to work tonight. <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, Stan, you and uh, Joyce are going to help us get through that. I'm, I'm, I don't like not 
truly understanding where we are with something. And uh, okay. <laughs> I trust you. Thank you. All right. On to the restroom. Carlos, get us there on the restroom. We got 20 grand. We need to start designing that. We're moving forward. So you have anything uh, to report? So yeah, just a couple of things. Uh, so obviously we're all aware that we received the grant from the county beautification grant, $20,000. Um, two uh, commissioners were appointed to help through the process, um, Kermit and Jim. Um, and I've engaged them. I've sent them a couple of uh, emails. One, um, a couple of weeks back, just uh, letting them know that uh, I was working on updating the contract with uh, Civil Design Studios. The original contract that they provided to us that we submitted uh, with the county uh, was not a complete proposal, um, and it wasn't going to meet the requirements of the grant. So I went back to Civil Design Studios. I shared with Monty the grant and the language that uh, the grant had. And I wanted to make sure that he understood what uh, outcome we wanted once the work was performed. Um, we've had several emails and a phone conversation to make sure that we both understood uh, or that he understood what the grant uh, was all about. He submitted a uh, revised proposal to us which I have forwarded to um, both Kermit and Jim and our finance manager and general manager Weigold. Uh, we are right now in the process of uh, getting that uh, proposal um, through a legal counsel and getting a, um, uh, a final uh, uh, thing going with them. Um, so we're, we're looking to get started here uh, very shortly on this. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a, a process of trying to figure out uh, design for, for the restroom. We have issues with or questions about water, about sewer, about uh, lights, about um, ADA compliance and all that stuff. But uh, Monty is well aware of those issues. Uh, and uh, he's, he's going to get us through that. So uh, I'm confident with it uh, that he's going to get us a good, good result after he's all done. A couple of things is that uh, we have a time frame for this grant. So we have signed a contract with the county, and we have basically told the county that we will come up with a final product for them. Uh, and our, our grant ends uh, June 30th of this coming year. So we have about seven months to fulfill our agreement. After June 30th, we have three months to submit a final document to the county for them for, for the grant. Uh, so on our end, the time is time is kicking, uh, clicking on us. But um, you know, I think I think we'll be okay. I think Monty's going to get us there. All right. I want to thank Carlos for staying on top of that because I think it's bad to take money and then not use it for what it is that you said you were going to use it for. So I'm glad he's getting us down that road. And once again, remember, that's just the design of the bathroom. So when we're done with this, we should be able to say, hey, this is what we're going with right here. And that's the product that they're looking for. Is that correct, Carlos? That is correct. Okay. And um, so uh, there you go. We don't really need any other discussion on that. Is that correct? Not at this point. Uh, as soon as the contract is uh, executed with Civil Design Studios, which I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be within the next two weeks, right. uh, we will begin work and we'll, you know, like I said, I'll engage Kermit and Jim and we'll go through the uh, EIR and work with uh, Monty on, on trying to get something. Uh, hopefully in January, Kermit or Jim can have an update, uh, and I don't have to update you on anything since they're the new the commissioners that have been appointed to this. Yeah, awesome. Osana, maybe we can get an ad hoc section put onto the agenda since we have the ad hoc bathroom and the ad hoc skate park. Thank you. Um, okay, great. Kermit, you and Jim are on that. I appreciate it.
All right, that takes us into the discussion regarding parks, recreation, open space projects, priorities, and costs. I had this put on there because when we gave our priorities to the CCSD board, we had them in order as the bathroom and then the skate park. And there seems to be some disagreement as to what our priorities are. And my feeling is this, that the skate park is our largest priority over the bathroom. And I don't know if they were put on in that order in order of importance or if they just got written down that way. But my personal feeling is that our, the skate park should be the number one priority of the pros commission. Any comments from anybody else? When, when okay. it was written down, we really hadn't discussed much of anything about either one. So I think they just accidentally got put in that order or whatever. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm just going to make note of it that our number one prior, well, is the skate park first. Right. Somebody okay. want to yeah. make that motion? I make the motion that skate park be uh, awarded the first priority because they have more signatures on petition and the friends of the bathroom don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second that. Please, please record that motion as so. <laughs> Adolf is second. Any other, uh, any, all in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. Anything other than that? Any future agenda items? I think um, we have enough. <laughs> yeah. Sorry the meeting went so long, but listen, we're doing stuff. We complained for so many years we weren't doing anything, and now we are, and it takes some time. So I appreciate everybody's time and efforts. Uh, Right on, Carlos and John, thank you. Osana, Haley, thank you guys for hanging out. And to the public, thanks for hanging out with us. Appreciate it. We're adjourned. Yeah. Oh, I think I think Julie's uh, got her hand hand up. Uh, oh, Julie, Steve, go I'm, ahead. I'm not sure if she wants to comment. Thank you so much. I, I just really want to say how much we appreciate all of you working with us together on this project. Your time and input is is greatly greatly. Uh, appreciated by all of us. And for Stan and Kermit and Joyce, if you'd be so kind, if it's all right, I, I'm going to reach out to you via email. I think it would be worth having a Zoom call with Aaron Spawn at Spawn yeah. Ranch. How do you guys feel about that? I, I That's think fine. Great. Yeah. That way, he, you know, I, I can only do what I can in relaying the information, but that way it can come from him firsthand and you can be, be better informed. I think that would be quite okay. wonderful. Awesome. I will email you all today and see what might work for your schedules early part of next week. Thank you, Troy. My Steve, pleasure. You have, one more, you have one more agenda item, which is future agenda items number seven. Yes. Anybody got anything to say for that? The, the, what was no, it? Yeah, we don't have, we're, we've got plenty of agenda items now. Well, I just don't let oh. it be lost that we might want to have a 501c3 discussion next year. No, uh, I'm with that. But somebody else has got to do that. That's a great idea, but I can't have that on my plate. Okay. I'll play in that game, but we need some big, strong person to, to take charge of that, Kitty. I'll, I'll look into it. <laughs> Jim, yeah. I would like to add an agenda item. Uh, and that would be the uh, right away for the uh, piney way. Yeah. Do you have anything more on that lately? Um, I talked a little bit with Kermit about this yesterday. I did a little walk there, and uh, apparently the uh, there's a rumor that the landowner at the bottom is going to build a retaining wall, which would make it impossible for a uh, fire truck to use that. Fire truck doesn't need an easement because an emergency is an emergency. But um, you know, if if the if the land is altered so that it closes off that road, I think we should take a look at uh, just look at it. That's all. Yeah, no, we've it's kind of been on our on our radar. You know, I just I let's always put it on next month. Let's put it on next month's agenda. All right, let's put that back on the agenda, Osana. Let's get on that. That's the Piney Way um, access. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Let's go on for our day. Thank you.